Hi and welcome to tutorial 36 in this series of tutorials designed to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language Programming. If you're not a member of our mailing list then please go to markplex.com and sign up for our email mailing list and then I'll be happy to let you know when I create new tutorials or programs. So in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at globalvariable.dll which is one of the DLLs that you can find on the tradestation.com support site that will enable you to transfer data from uh, one chart to another chart or for example from a radar screen to a chart. Now in this particular chart what we're going to be doing is transferring the uh, the value of the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average stocks that I've uh, added here uh, using the TradeStation uh, insert group of stocks feature and we're going to be passing the closing price of each of those to a chart which happens to contain the symbol dollar INDU which is also the Dow Jones Industrial Average and we're going to be adding them up and dividing them by the divisor and then plotting the line. Now this is probably not especially useful but it's designed to show you the use of global variables. Now the big advantage of global variables uh, as compared to ADE or ELX or any of the other DLLs that you'll be able to find on the TradeStation support site is that it is extremely easy to set up. It also comes with a couple of workspaces so you can see documented examples of how the program works and also includes a really good document which explains its use. But what I wanted to do here is just just give you a, a chance to um, to see how easy it is to use and um, the big disadvantage of global variable DLL is that it uh, does not have intrinsically any associated time or date stamps in itself and this means that there is no way of doing automatic synchronization or no automatic way of doing synchronization using the global variable DLL and for this reason what uh, most of the time happens is we apply it for live to live data you can see an example of this on this chart here you'll see that I applied the, uh, the global variable here so all these bars here were historic bars and I've just plotted the the close of those bars but then as soon as uh, global variable is applied it starts uh, plotting data which it is is retrieving from the radar screen. So in order to follow along with this tutorial the the first thing you'll need to do if you've not done it is to go to the TradeStation forum and if you do a search on global variables space 2.2 space download you should find I think there we go at, le at least on that page I'm not sure if it'll come up by itself here but then you click on that and you can do the download there is a download zip which includes the DLL instructions of where to put the DLL and uh, I've put mine into my uh, TradeStation program folder but please follow the instructions included on the support site and also some demo uh, workspaces and the documents so you can understand how to use it. but uh, just to uh, just to show how easy this is I'm going to just go and show you the the radar screen that I've created and uh, we've applied to this radar screen a little uh, program called send data simple and I'll just show you that program and it couldn't really be any simpler could it what we're saying is if it's the last bar on the chart then value 3 equals GV set float and then uh, get app info AI row is showing you the row of on the radar screen and uh, I've also plotted that so if we go back to radar screen you'll see what I mean you can see for example in row 2 it's plotting 2 in row 3 it's plotting 3 and row 4 is plotting 4 now with global variable you can uh, store lots of different types of data you can store integers you can store uh, boolean you can you can store floats doubles uh, and so on and you can find all, all that information in the word document that you'll be able to download now in this particular case we're setting a float because we're going to be passing the value of these stocks so we, we don't need to use anything else um, and there's also two main ways of storing them you can store them as numbers or you can name them and in this case we're just storing them as a number and as it happens the number that we're going to be using is the row in the radar script so it makes for a very very simple sending function now what I've also done here in this uh, radar screen if we just go to format analysis techniques just going to look at this one here is I've made it so it doesn't update uh, intrabar so we're just going to be sending the data every minute and uh, we'll discuss some issue potential issues with that later but I just wanted to keep this as simple as possible now when we go back to the chart we'll see that we're receiving this data and I'll just show you the program as to how we're doing that again maybe a wee bit more complicated but still pretty simple uh, we've got an input which is the divisor uh, we've got a variable which is sum 
And what we say is if it's the last bar on the chart, then uh, we reset sum to zero and we go through uh, what we know as to be the the um, the variables that are stored being stored by radar screen in rows 33 to 33 and uh, you'll wonder why I'm using three there well that's because we've got some we've got a title and we've got the symbol there so we're using three through to 32 and let's just go back and look at that oh I've said three to 30 33 but uh, let's just correct that and press uh, press F3 and uh, incidentally if we go back to the chart now you'll see that we've got this thin grey line because um, the chart up to this point believes it's just been applied and therefore has only historic data so what we'll see as we as we come back to this chart that the uh, the plot will start reforming but uh, let's just go back to here so we're going 3 to 33 and what we're doing is we're getting the float from each of those numeric values from uh, get float 3, get float 4, get float 5 all the way to 32 so that we get all those uh, 30 um, stocks we add them all together each each time and uh, and here's the little bit that makes uh, makes it plot a, a light gray line of the close if sum is equal to zero in other words if we're talking about historic bars but if we're actually receiving data from the radar screen the uh, the get floats uh, added together will not be zero and in that case what we do is we divide the sum by this divisor which you can uh, find out from the Wall Street Journal and uh, we're plotting that on the chart we're coloring it dark red and I've just given it a thickness of three just so that we can we can see it a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more clearly what I've also done here is just print uh, added a print a print statement I know that uh, IBM is, is in line 15 and uh, if we go back to the chart and we open the output bar what you'll see is that this number stays the same for the whole minute even though in reality on the radar screen it is changing it stays the same here because we're only updating the sending uh, functionality every minute so that's the uh, that's this very very simple program now there is one potentially slight issue here or maybe even major issue and that is that the uh, we're assuming that the radar screen, the end of the minute, the radar screen is sending the information and then we're receiving the information straight after that. Now, what if that were reversed? The chart here I've also got set up, uh, if we go to the analysis techniques, as being, um, okay, it's set up intrabar at the moment. I'm going to change that to, so it doesn't update intrabar. Um, so we've now got the radar screen that's not been updated intrabar and we've also got a chart that's not been in updated intrabar so what could happen potentially is the chart could receive the data before the data sent and that would mean that we'd get data that's a whole minute old in this in this case now there are a couple of uh, couple of potential ways of dealing with this one of them would be to make the radar screen update intrabar and of course that's causing a little bit more processing to happen on the computer but it would mean that even if the, the uh, at the minute mark the chart received before the send it would the data would not be too far off because we'd just be a, a tick or so back so that would be one way of doing it I've also developed uh, another way of doing it and that is by uh, setting a timer so that the uh, receiving chart just waits a little bit of time before it grabs the information and what I'm going to do is just do another video just to explain uh, how that uses it how's that used uh, it's a little bit more complicated but it's just an interesting uh, concept in itself so anyway i hope that this uh, has given you some idea of how global variable dll works and how to uh, download and uh, set that up uh, very simple very good way of passing data between charts radar screen option station and so on with the proviso that you remember that there is no automatic synchronization uh, between bars on different charts.